Hi, and this is Running Rants with Helen. I'm Helen, and um, this is where I run and rant and talk about whatever I want. And today, a beautiful East Shore Trail, Lake Tahoe. Um, there's a prescribed burn where I live in Truckee, so it was really smoky. So I drove 20 minutes to come run here. Absolutely killer, beautiful day. Um, and today I wanted to talk about how there's a few things within trail running um, that just give me pyramid scheme vibes, such as like tiered sponsorships, or like sponsorship systems, um, and some race series stuff. And yeah, I also understand that these aren't actually pyramid schemes, but they have some of the same characteristics for sure. Um, so I think one of the first things that comes to mind when I think of pyramid scheme, trail running, um, I think of race series. And right now, like more specifically, I've been thinking about like the UTMB World Series. And also like, I wanna preface this with, like don't get me wrong, I benefit from this series and I participate in it. But this is also coming from like a standpoint of, I'm a professional trail runner. I usually don't have to pay for these races. And I also have a travel budget, meaning like, I don't have to spend like my own money to get to these places to try to qualify for UTMB. And like when I first got into trail running, when I first started racing again, like there, the UTMB World Series didn't exist. It was like ITRA points. And if you had a high enough ITRA score, you got in to whatever race you wanted for free. And that was it. And I think there's just been a lot of change, um, which can be good or bad. I think there's good aspects. I think there's bad aspects of it. But I think what feels a little pyramid scheme to me is that for like general trail running population, it's like the more stones you have, the more likely you are to like get chosen in the lottery to make it to the finals. And like with that, the only way to get stones is to run UTMB World Series races, whereas before you could run any race that gave you an ITRA score. And then like essentially the more, since I said like the more, st the more stones you have, the more likely you are to get in that like directly correlates to how much money you're willing to put into this system to then like have a higher chance of getting chosen. Um, so I think that's like a little tricky, uh, especially when like there aren't that many World Series races. And then also you even need like a valid UTMB index like within that category of like 50K, 100K, 100 mile to apply for the lottery. And then like from an elite level, like depending on whatever your UTMB index that like awards you with different like advantages, like where you are on the start line and like your crew and all of that at the finals. And like, if you run UTMB World Series races, you get a higher UTMB index. Typically it seems like than if you run another race that just submits. So, I don't know, that part feels a little pyramid schemey to me. Just because it feels like, yeah, the more money you put into it, like the higher your chances are. And it's all like going to the same entity. Um, and then I feel like that, try, like that tries to like funnel people in to only running like these corporately owned or like partnered races um and there's like a lot of other really great races but it like becomes hard when like if that's your goal is to go run UTMB World Series then and then you kind of have to funnel into the series yeah I feel like that's all my thoughts on like UTMB World Series giving pyramid scheme vibes um and just the stones. I don't know. I have so many gosh darn stones. 
And like there's direct ways for elites to like qualify if you run one of those races. So I feel like we have an easier time there than having to be in the lottery. Yeah, which is kind of similar to like golden ticket races. It's like either you enter the lottery and you try to get in that way or you um, race golden ticket races and you get like typically top two or maybe top three and you get into states. But I feel like that's a little different just because like your tickets are accrued like based off of years and not necessarily on like how many races you've run. Like you just have to run one qualifier, which I don't know, I kind of think makes more sense. And then it's not as much of like how much money you paid. But I also think like, yeah, I don't know. I have been to Western States, I haven't run it, but I've crewed and paced two years now. Um, and I think it's a really cool race. I think the history is cool. I don't know if I ever want to run it. Um, just cause I don't know how exciting, like I feel the course is to me, but I also don't quite understand like just the extreme hype around it. Like, I don't know, I feel like we see a lot of professional runners or elite runners like almost devote their entire careers to like chasing golden tickets. And like, if that's what makes you stoked and if like running those qualifier races are like what makes you happy and like that's what you wanna do, I think that's great. But I feel like I've seen it a lot where like the desire to get into states is so bad that like people will run races that like the only reason why they want to run it is because it's a golden ticket and there's no other reason. And then I think that just like really, really narrows your definition of success when that's like your main goal. Cause it's either like I get first or second or I feel like I failed. And I just think that can like become a pretty unhealthy mindset. Especially like, I don't know, especially in the spring, like if you try Black Canyon first and then like don't make it. And then like, I don't know, Canyons is really close. Yeah, I feel like it just gets a little tricky. But also maybe I just don't understand. And then, yeah, then there's like Golden Trail, which once again, a little pyramid schemey, maybe like, like but I think that is like more kind of geared towards elite runners. Just because like the overall series, like I think it's your top four races and then you get scores and then that's like how you qualify for the finals. Um, but that also like requires a lot of travel because there's usually like two races in each country. So if you need four, you have to go to like at least two places. Maybe one of them is close to where you live. Um, yeah, I think it's tricky because it seems like these race series like just want you to only run that race series. And I guess that's fine from like their standpoint, but I feel like there's like so many different races I want to run and like, I feel like a lot of them aren't part of a series or they are. Um, yeah, I feel like the last thing that I think about when I'm like trail running pyramid scheme vibes, it's like tiered sponsorship levels. Cause I feel like in it, you're like, oh, they're all sponsored by this brand. But then it's kind of like, when you start really looking into it, it's like, well, there's the people at the top that are like making a full living from this. And then like, maybe they're on like, the international team and then maybe there's like national teams so then maybe like your travel budget only works for the country you live in which is like kind of limiting but then like you hold on to the hope that like maybe someday you'll get to like the international team and then even below that it's like well maybe you're not getting paid at all and it's like free gear and then maybe under that it's like 
you're not even getting free gear, you have like a personally used discount code. But then like, I don't know, maybe you start there, but you're like trying to fight your way up the, the pyramid to maybe someday like be at the top, which I don't know, I think it makes it confusing for everyone. And I think also like maybe it's portrayed as like a path forward of like once you prove yourself, but I feel like that's kind of rarely the, I don't know, rarely the case. Thing about tiered sponsorship. And then maybe on the bottom of that, it's just like referral links. I feel like those are kind of the worst out of the whole thing. Like here, spend money with Helen Mino Faulkner is really fast, 23, and you'll get 5% off. I don't know. But then that's feeding into the pyramid, especially what if you already are at the top and then plus you have an affiliate link fully. So from a, from a brand's point of view, um, the tiered system seems to make a lot of sense because you're, you're investing in a person at a lower level and then you're looking for improvement and, and uh, like hopefully in the future they can move to the next level. Um, do you think there's a better system or do you think it should just be no sponsorship or full sponsorship oh. or what do you think is the is the right way to do it well i think the issue is like it's like the promise of potential right and like that's not necessarily always a path forward or a guarantee or like sometimes there's like no thought of you'll ever get there i mean it's just marketing which pyramid schemes do be marketing um yeah, I don't know what a better system is. Maybe like a clear path forward or like really differentiating those levels or like, I just don't think like a lot of the time brands are super transparent. And so then they like use that hope of like, well maybe someday to get you sucked on in. And then at that point you feel like you're kind of in a little deep cause you've invested like that time, energy, like, into that brand from your side. And then I feel like if you leave or do something else, like go to a different brand or stuff, like you kind of feel like it was all for nothing, even though it never is. But yeah, I feel like the exit costs yeah. are kind of high. Yeah. Can you talk about like um, some of the benefits of having some structure in race series like UTMB, like Golden Series, like a golden ticket type thing? Like what, from a from an industry standpoint or from an athlete standpoint? Well, from a running industry standpoint, then if you get everyone to just run your series, then you make more money. Um, from a runner standpoint, I feel like sometimes there's just so many races that like it does make it a little bit easier to choose and to structure your schedule. Um, also a really cool thing about Golden Trail is if, I think it's maybe top 20 and then especially top 10. If you do that well at a race, then like, I don't know a better way to say this, but it's like the traveling circus. And then you get, like they'll help you with race entries or travel or a place to stay. Um, and so I feel like that part is really cool from an athlete standpoint, like, if you're in the position to be able to do well at those races, I think that they can really benefit you. And also like just the media coverage of Golden Trail specifically, like I think athletes get a lot of exposure, which then can, if your goal is to get sponsored or if that's something you're thinking about, it makes it like a little bit easier. Um, and then like, I don't know. Yeah, I think like it does help with a little bit of structure if you're kind of willy nilly all over the place. And like, if your goal is states, then like, once again, you have a path forward of like, if you're competing for golden tickets, then you're like, okay, that's how I'll structure my season. Do you think there's a future where uh, like, 
I, I think right now we have Uroy, we have Fantasy Trail, we have like sort of these ranking systems that sometimes feel more like popularity contest than performance-based indicators. Do you think there's a future or a system like in track and field um, where we can kind of quantify top performances? Or do you think it's, since trail running is so dynamic, it's always going to be sort of up for interpretation? Well, I think it is up for interpretation because there's people who are good at different types of trail races. And it's like, you say trail running and it's such a, such a broad spectrum of race distances and types. Um, I mean, I think that's kind of what they were trying to do with like ITRA score and UTMB index. But those are just like, um, I don't know, I think they're flawed in a lot of ways, like those algorithms. And I mean, UTMB is not uh, transparent with how their algorithm works. And like, I think when you assign a number to it, like, I think maybe you could tell from that. But like I said, I think that these indexes are kind of flawed. Um, yeah, especially like in other parts of the world. And yeah, like I did well at Kodiak and I'm pretty sure I, mean, I, I won Kodiak and I, I thought I ran pretty fast and I got top 10 overall and it still dropped my UTMB index. And I think most of the time it'd be like, well, I don't care, it doesn't matter, it's some random arbitrary number. But that number, when you go to the finals, like dictates whether or not your crew gets a priority bus pass or if your crew gets a car pass or where you start on the start line. And like, those are big advantages. And yeah, I just, I think that makes it also a little tricky. And then like, sometimes I don't think you need, like, you don't need to be running the most competitive races all year long. I think it's good to like have a balance and have a mix, but I think it's also like making it tricky to do that without then like putting you at a disadvantage. Yeah, I guess talk about like the, there's sort of like this push and pull, like you wanna, you wanna do competitive races for the sake of testing yourself and putting yourself against a competitive field, but at the same time, you have to balance what your intentions are and why you want to do a race, whether it's the field or the course. You talk about how that like UTMB series for you plays into that sort of decision making. Yeah, I mean, so it was 2022. Um, there's an application through UTMB. And at this point, I was unsponsored when I applied. And it was like to get, um, like travel funding to be able to go to any of the races. And like, you had to pick your top three. And one of the races on my list was Mexico. And I got chosen for that race. And I didn't make it very far. Um, I fell down the hill, down a hill in the dark um, and rolled my ankle really bad. And it swelled up and ended my day. So I like was, sobbing walking through the entire field and like eventually like I called the race and I got to an aid station and um this guy on an ATV came and uh picked me up it was kind of funny though because I'm like hysterically sobbing and he's like trying to cheer me up and he's like do you want to drive like no but thank you so much um and I think the main takeaway I got from that race is just like, I can't only run races because I like got support or because I wanted to qualify for another race. Like that's not a good enough reason for me. And I think you have to think about like what your intentions and what your values are and if those are, like if your intentions are aligning with those values. Oh, hell. Um, because like, 
if your only reason for running a race is like either ego driven or like because you feel external pressure like I guess I don't know what your values are like I highly doubt that those things are aligning with it and I mean it seems like a freak accident I fell down this hill but I think like I also got a valuable a really valuable lesson from it and so I think when I look at races now I have to think like is this really truly something I want to run outside of like if it's part of a series or outside of like sponsorship stuff like it truly has to be like I want to run that race because I want to run that race this has been running rants with Helen if you can think of anything else that you feel like is pyramid scheming about trail running go ahead and put it in the comments um thanks for watching and i'll see you next time yeah.